o'clock today. I'm Adrian Goldberg and we're chatting to Trevor Burton. Trevor, a legend of the local music scene. Born in Aston, played with the likes of The Move, played with the Steve Gibbons band when they had their big hit Tulane. Also played with Raymond Frogger, who had huge hits in the United States. Very successful internationally, though never matched that here in the UK. And Trevor now in his own band as well. And we can reveal this morning that Trevor is going to be inducted into King's Heat's Walk of Stars. There's even a little gig to celebrate that as well. Uh, but I want to talk more about Trevor's career. Trevor, you talked about there being sort of a, a piano in every house and yeah. a, a piano in every pub. When, when did you first decide to get into a band then, that you wanted to be a musician for life? It was written in the stars, really, from when I was little. I just Music just set me on fire and I just wanted to play music and play any instrument. Uh, I started playing guitar when I was seven or eight. I could play that, the did, drums did naturally. That, did, did the guitar come easy to you? Yeah, I taught myself to play everything. Yeah. yeah. You taught yourself? Yeah. I mean, literally by ear? Yeah. No tutor, no teacher? Have, no, no teachers in those days. Really? Oh, that's <laughs> amazing. I find that amazing. I mean, I, I suppose it just proves that you are truly, naturally musical because, yeah. you know, I've always wanted to play the guitar. I've always wanted to play an instrument. Mm. I never could. Yeah. You just picked it up. You, you learned how to do it by yeah. ear and using your hands. Yeah. I think for the first year or so, I didn't know how to tune it up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I made my own tuning up. Then I found out eventually how to, to tune it properly. And then I, I could I learned to play properly. But that was when I was about, I'd be about nine then. What was the first band you were in? Trevor Burton and the Everglades <laughs> when I was 13 years old. Really? And did yeah. they do any gigs? They did. Yeah, just like little working men's clubs and... Little pubs, yeah. And I know you hung around at one point with um, uh, Noel Redding from the Jimi Hendrix band as well. Is it true that you shared a flat with Noel Redding? Yeah, we used to have a house in Wandsworth in London. But yeah. that was the, the move and Hendrix toured England and Europe a lot together. And we got, we just got to live together. You know, it's more convenient to be down there and then travelling back as a force of Birmingham. I've, inter- I've interviewed Noel Redding and... Um, <laughs> I think he was a bit embittered, I suppose, by his experience in the yeah. music business. Felt that he didn't get his dues as, you know, the bassist in Jimi Hendrix's band. Do, do you have any sense of bitterness about your career or have you just enjoyed every minute of it? I've enjoyed every minute of it. I've never been bitter about it, you know. No, you've really. had, and you've had a lot of success. We mentioned the move then and you, you mentioned your own band, the Everglades. Yeah. So how did you come across Roy Wood and get, and get to create the move with him? Well, I went from Trevor Burton and the Everglades when I was 15 years old. I left school. And joined uh, Danny King in the Mayfair set. And Danny was like a stalwart of uh, Birmingham rock and roll from the Danny King and the Jesters, the Royals. And then it became Danny King in the Mayfair set, which I, I turned professional when I was 15 with Danny King. Then from that, it went to the move. Have you ever done a proper day's work in your life? I went uh, four days. <laughs> what was that? As a, as a motor mechanic, a trainee, apprentice. And I was in a pit one day, and I had to, it was greasing all these nipples, as they used to say. And uh, the, uh, changing the oil on the sump, and it just the lot just went all over me. The whole, all the oil from the engine just went all over me. I thought, that's it. I'm out of this. And that was it. Never yeah, went back. Back to Did you know Roy, Roy Wood, though? Around, was he just around town at that time? Yeah, well, you had, um, there was, he was, Roy would play with Mike Sheridan and the Knight Riders. I was with Danny King and the Mayfair set, and you had Carl Wayne and the Vikings. Mm. And out of those three bands, uh, evolved the move. And the move, of course, had a huge hit with Blackberry Way. Goodbye, Blackberry Way. Shoot to want me back another day. And when that was number one, yeah. you quit. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, tell us about that then. <laughs> You did, um, there you are. At last, you've got a number one record and you decide <laughs> to walk out on it. What kind of fool are you, Trevor? Well, you know, it, was, um, it wasn't foolish. It was, um, I just had enough of being a pop star in a pop band and I wanted to pursue the blues more and uh, that era, area of music. So uh, I, I was hanging out with like Steve Winwood and Traffic and uh, those guys. and It was such a different... Uh, area to the, what the move was doing. I wanted to do that, so I left the move. So were they were they too much of a pop band for you? In the end, it was yeah, it, it was for me. Yeah, brave decision though. I mean, you could have just 
stayed in the band and mm. enjoyed the ride, picked up the royalties, had the yeah. hits, yeah. had the adulation. Yeah. It, it, it takes for, something to walk away from that, doesn't it? Yeah, it had lost its magic for me as well, I think, by that point. You know, we, we'd, we'd worked and worked and worked and worked on the road, non-stop, you know, working every night of the, the was to work, really, every yeah. night of the year, non-stop touring. So when I, when I left the move, it was great to stop doing that as well for a while. You know, I didn't tour them for a year or two, you know. Did you miss the the glamour though? Because undeniably, being mm. you know a big band as the move were at that time, yeah, the, the, you know you would have been you know interviewed a lot. You would have had yeah. your picture taken. You know, just all the stuff that goes with being a pop star. Yeah, but it becomes um, very time consuming as far as your life goals. You're being told what to do every day. You you know you you got this photo session, that photo session. You got to dress like this, talk like that, walk like this, and I just wanted to be me. You know, I'd had enough of all that uh, manipulation. So you walked out of a number one band. Yeah. What happened next then? We f- <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I formed a band with uh, Steve Gibbons. Mm. Um, he, had, he was with the Uglies at the time, and we, we put a band together called Balls with uh, Danny Lane, who was with the Moody Blues, mm. and uh, eventually with Alan White from the Plastic Ono band, the drummer. And we did a, like a year of recording stuff. And nothing ever was released from that that lineup. Yeah, and is it still about? Is it there to be released? If somebody were able to track it down, th- there's some stuff, some stuff in the archives of uh, where was it? Barnes Olympic Music, Olympic Studios. We used to record that. One record came out called "Fight for My Country." It came out as balls, but then it was released as Trevor Burton. Then it was released. Two more times after that as Trevor Burton. We didn't do anything at all. And you were playing then, after that period, you then link, linked up with Raymond Froggart. Yeah, that's after eventually I uh, I lived in London for three years, and three, four years. Then I came back to Birmingham. and uh, Is that when you moved to King's East? No, I, I, was moved, I was in Harbin to start with. My mother lived in Erdington now. And I stayed with her for a while. Then I, I moved to Harbin. And then I linked up with Froggy. And I was with Froggy for about two years, I think. And he was, yeah. it was a man, Raymond Frog, a very gifted songwriter, and some of his, you know, stuff that he's written has, has gone on to be covered by very successful artists yeah. and very popular in the States. Never quite made that breakthrough here, always seen as a bit of a, a nearly man. I don't mean to be yeah. to denigrate him when I say that because he's a very accomplished and talented musician, but always yeah. a man on the verge of a breakthrough. Absolutely. He didn't make it very big on the country and western scene, though. I mean, he mm. did... He did lots of shows at Wembley and uh, stadium shows around Europe. But no, he never made it in a charts big. And then you had, your, I suppose, your second brush with stardom then was when you, you hooked up with uh, Steve Gibbons again and you had a, a big hit with Tulane, didn't you? Yeah. Let's have a look. Oh, he can't catch up with you, go Tulane. He ain't man enough for you, go Tulane. Use all the speed you've got, go Tulane. Were you, were you, by the time that was a hit, then were you were you sort of ready for it the second time around? Do you think? Oh yeah, but it was I I, I couldn't I had to kick myself actually when we did Top of the Pops with that because it had been like in the sixties the last time I'd been on Top of the Pops and that was seventy what seventy six or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it had been like eight nine years since I'd done Top of the Pops and then I was back on it again. Uh, it was very really strange actually. When you say what do you mean you could kick yourself? Had you missed it? <laughs> Um, I hadn't missed it, but it, I just, it was a bit of like a, not a nightmare, it was a bit of a dream, you know, to be back there. I'm really I was going to say, did, did you think, having sort of walked away from a band with a number one single when you walked away from the move then, that that, that was it, that door had shut behind you forever in life and you'd never be there again? Yes, in a way, I did, yeah. But um, to do it with the Steve Gibbons band was a different kettle of fish because the, the Steve Gibbons band was a very raw, raucous rock and roll band you know it wasn't a pop band ever so it was it, that didn't come into it and renowned story. um you know it was a great touring band as well a great live yeah. band yeah and i saw you know i'm just trying to think the, the first time i saw the steve gibbons band uh, i'm not sure if you might have left um the steve gibbons band then but it's probably sometime in the mid 80s mm. um i left steve band i think it was 82 yeah, when I, yeah. When I left. Well, they were brilliant when you left them, mate. Uh, thank you. <laughs> 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 
And uh, why did you quit, Steve, then? Because obviously, you know, by that stage, you know, the hits had gone for, for the Steve Gibbons band as well. Yeah. Was it just a case of wanting to do something for yourself in your own name? Yeah. I'd had enough for touring again, actually. Yeah. We yeah. like we toured non-stop again with the Steve Gibbons band, which was fantastic. I mean, we had a, the, one of the best tours I've ever done in my life was in 76 when we uh, supported The Who. Mm. I mean, we toured the whole of Europe and then we, we toured the whole of America coast to coast with The Who, which is phenomenal. I mean, Keith Moon was still with them at the time. So they were at their peak. Yeah, yeah. And they were phenomenal. You know, just for, and the, the smallest gigs were like 15,000 up to 80,000 people. What kind of places were you playing? Universities and stadiums. Big play, big gigs. What, all over the world in the States? Yes, just Europe and America we did. With yeah. Them. But I mean, yeah. we were in America with them for about three months, just played everywhere. And, uh, I, think, I think Bev in Tipton's got a question for you. Bev, how are you? Hello, Adrian. Yeah, Hello, right, Trevor. Yeah, what do you want to ask Trevor, mate? Hello, mate. It, it's not that Bev, Trevor, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was a big fan of, of the move and everything, and uh, lucky enough to meet you several times, mate, um, on the ELO tour in 1976 and beyond. Yeah. Um, back in the 80s, we both used to play, uh, your, your band and my band both used to play at the Coach and Horses in West Brom. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were the Wazzocks. <laughs> the Wazzocks? You might vaguely remember that. <laughs> We've had some laughs over, over a drink uh, yeah, together. Yeah. But um, it, it was a great thrill for me, being a big fan of the move and everything, to see us building the Express and Star on consecutive nights, you know, the Trevor right. Burton band right. and the Wazzocks. Uh, quite something. But what I wanted to ask you, Trevor, uh, back in the, in the move days, there was one single that not many people know about that I thought was brilliant, Wild Tiger Woman. Yeah. And I, I think I'm right in saying that your influence on the band was a bit more progressive and the rock side rather than the commercial side. I think I think yeah. it's fair to say that. Yeah. Um, what did you think of that single, Trevor? I thought it was great. I thought it was brilliant. Mm. It really rocked that single. That was the first uh, track I played bass guitar on, actually, after I see, yeah. Ace had left the band. Yeah. And so it did. It rocks it up that track. But it, it was a it was a flop. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was the it was the next one after Fire Brigade, I, I believe, and then mm. and then the one after that was Blackberry Way, which was that's right, yeah, a, a great song. But back to the well, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a flop. I mean, it, I think it got it into the lower thirties yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, if it's only a top forty single, you know, yeah. he's, he's not interested. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Bev, great to speak to you. Thanks for joining. I have to say, um, uh, I mean, clearly the work you did with the move, Trevor, you know, stands comparison, I think, with any pop music that, that's ever been written. But I also think that uh, the Steve Gibbons band stuff around the time of Chile yeah. Down in the Bunker yeah. and all that sort of era of Steve Gibbons. I know Steve's made a lot of records over the years, but I still think even now that stuff stands up and is, is a really, really yeah. excellent It does, record. yeah. yeah. It does, yeah. So you have now been honoured, or are about to be honoured, in your own... Home suburb of King's Heath. Yep. Uh, you got a gig, haven't you, to market? June the 3rd, is it? Yes, at the Hare and Hounds. That's, uh, there'll be the presentation. And then on the evening, we'll be doing a gig with the move, with Bev and me, the move now. Yeah. And, my, and the Trevor Burton band. So, as Bev, well. Bevan of BBC Radio WM fame hmm? will be playing alongside you, yeah? yeah? There'll be you, who else? And the Trevor Burton band. Oh, as fantastic. Well. So, you're going to do a gig as, as the move? Yeah, uh, uh, and as the Trevor Burton band, yeah, so a double bill. Yeah, you get to play twice. Yeah, I was uh, I went to see the Stranglers at the Academy in Birmingham last week, uh, last weekend. Jet Black was playing the drums. He didn't play the whole set. He played about half of it. Played about fifty minutes, and he's seventy five. Is this really? Do you think uh, you're still going to be playing when you're seventy five? Well, if I'm alive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing anything uh, else. Trevor, thank you uh, very much indeed for being with us today. Trevor Burton, uh, founder member of The Move, member of the Steve Gibbons Band in their hit-making days and uh, of the Trevor Burton Band who are playing a special gig in Kings Heath on Monday the 3rd of June. Only seven quid in as well uh, to mark his induction into Kings Heath's Walk of Stars following the trailblaze by Toya Wilcox.